Okay, let's pray before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I came to preach the Word of God. I just ask that your Holy Spirit speak through me unto us. Father, God, open our ears to hear your voice and help us to be the doers of the Word, not deceiving ourselves. Lord God, I just give myself over to you. Just give ourselves over to you. Please rule over us. And I just ask that you control our tongues and our mouth from speaking evil against our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father God, help us, Lord, and give us your wisdom and your discretion. Give us a fear of the Lord and the day of judgment. Father God, help us to know your truth and let the truth set us free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, so uh, recently uh, I've been uh, encountering uh, another big brother in Christ who's how to expose other false teachings or false beliefs. And actually, in doing so, he caused more division rather than uh, encouragement, rather than, you know, uh, encouraging us to change our ways. And this is because uh, it is not done in a rightful manner. Now, what does the Bible say about bringing up these expose, exposures. First of all, it says to do it in a humble, with a meekness and gentleness. Let's look at the verse. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, 1, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted, okay? Now, if you're making arguments and quarreling, then it's not right. It's wrong. It's already you're going off the grid, you're dividing the body, and fights and quarrelings result in division of the body. Okay, so when you're going around and accusing them, Oh, why did you say this, huh? This is wrong. Uh, explain yourself. Already this tone and this manner that you're speaking is already offensive to a brother or a sister. And it, the end result, no matter what they explain, whatever, the end result will be division. Those won't go together anymore. Okay, so when you approach somebody with a false doctrine that they believe, come in a spirit of meekness gentleness, come in love. What is greater? Huh? All these gifts, is that greater? All these anointing, all these prophecies, all these, you know, you know, correction, is that greater? What is the right form? It's love. Okay? Jesus said, what is love? Kind, gentle, huh? meek, joyful. All the fruit of the Spirit is, is all these goodness and patience and and long suffering. Well, you know the fruits. It's it's good. It's not attacking. It's not strife. It's not fight. Actually, Bible condemns strife, arguments. Bible condemns these people. You know, look. He loveth transgression that loveth strife. He that exalted his gate seeketh destruction. He that is of a proud heart stirs up strife. It's Proverbs 28, 25. He that is of a proud heart stirs up strife, but he that put it his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. So when you're making arguments and fights, it is because you think somehow you're better than the other person. Oh, I know better. I know the right thing. He doesn't know. You need to change. So it's like a pride thing that's coming out. This is wrong. It's wrong attitude. You know why we are so caught up in this right and wrong? Uh, it's come from the stem of Adam and Eve when they ate the fruit of good and evil. It made them start discerning good and evil. So, as a result of that, when they start blaming each other, complaining that it's their fault, woman first blames the snake. Oh, the snake made me do The snake is bad. I'm good. The snake is bad. And blaming all the faults of the snake. Okay? Adam. Oh, the woman that you gave me is your fault, God. Because you gave me that woman. And she deceived me and I ate. <clears throat> so, you know, 
Adam is blaming the woman and God as a result of trying to be so righteous. Self-righteous is wrong. No. So don't attack people that way. Okay, there are a lot of exposing Christians, this and that, this and that. You know what? Everybody has faults. And body of Christ need to just exhort them in a me spirit of meekness. Okay? Tell them if they don't want to listen, leave it to God. Okay? If they're in your church, then take two or more, three people, exhort them, you know, tell them about it in a loving manner that we actually care for your soul. They don't want to listen. And you know what? Tell to the whole church. If they don't listen to the whole community of saints telling them this is wrong, then, then you cast them out as a, as a heathen, as an unbeliever. Okay? Now, the Bible clearly tells us where does these, you know, fight come from? You know, it's because we're judging people. We're judging people. Let me tell you about the judging for it, okay? Now, as long as this person believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and he believes in repentance for salvation, as they repent of their sins and wash by the blood of Jesus Christ, then definitely can, they can enter into heaven. As long as they believe this and don't believe in the once they've always saved, you know, oh, I can sin no matter what and I'm still going to heaven. As long as they don't believe this doctrine, you know, then the rest of them, you can kind of close your eyes. As long as they are not doing those, and of course they are not worshipping any other being other than God, okay, as they are, as they are, you know, as they don't worship any other human being or exalt a human being in the place of God, then they're good, okay? So, for example, uh, obviously, right, like, I don't want to talk about them, but, like, the Catholics, okay? They basically kind of, like, exalt Pope as a replacement of Jesus Christ. And they revere him as, almost as Jesus Christ. They put Mary as high as Jesus Christ, as a queen of the universe. Well, you know what? If you do that, then that goes against the first law that I just said, you know, I mean, exalting any other human being as God, okay? Only God is the Word of God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Father, okay? Our Father. Nothing else than that. Now, as long as they don't go outside of this, then they are good. Other tiny little doctrines should not divide the body of Christ. But it's been happening. Just a tiny little belief that believe, oh, you know what? Uh, we believe the elders should run the church and it becomes Presbyterian or whatever, deacon center, other, you know. Oh, no, oh, we believe the pastor should run the church. There you go, you know, another sect. Oh, we believe you need to keep the Sabbath holy. There you go, Seventh day Adventist, gone. Okay? All these kind of tiny little differences make a huge difference. And it's just cutting the body of Christ. And this is the body of Christ that you're dividing by exposing, oh, this is wrong. This guy believes in gift of tongues. That should not divide the body of Christ. Oh, this person casts out demons. Whether they believe in cast out demons or don't believe in, this should not divide the body of Christ. Oh, they don't believe in demons. That they, they exist. Whether that they believe or not has nothing to do with salvation of Christ. Salvation, as I said, you know, is those things. As long as, you know, what is a cult is, is that their belief will eventually take that person, whoever is believing, to hell. That's a cult. Okay? So, for example, you know, if you, if you, um, you know, uh, believe that you can sin sexually, sexually immoral, you know, and still go to heaven without repenting of the sins, that will drive you to hell. And that's what we call one safe, always safe belief. 
And that's why this very dangerous belief. It's a Satan's lie. There's no such verse that once saved, always saved. Okay? You need to repent of your sins. Okay? It's a first Corinthians chapter 6, 9. Okay, verse 9. Read it. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, liars, adulterers, idolaters have any place in the kingdom, will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Okay, these people who are idolaters, liars, you know, you all need to repent. Revelation 21. Okay, and there are liars, thieves, and, you know, people who are, you know, afraid. And all these people have their part in the second death, the lake of fire. Okay, so you know who's going to go and who's not going to. Those who live holy. And how can you overcome sins? You need to refuse to live for yourself and start living for Christ only. Okay, that's the only way. How can I be free from demons? Live for Christ. And when you're not, you're not living for Christ. Okay, you're not fully living for Christ. And God will test you and He'll set you free from all these things as you follow Him with all your heart. Just got to all your heart love the Lord. He says, oh, it's impossible to overcome. All things are possible with God. It's impossible for you because you're not with God. You think you're following, you're not following God. So obviously, your dedication is half-hearted most likely. Okay, if you put your whole heart and love Him with all your heart and you put in priority and everything, you can overcome sins. Okay, these things over you can God will Himself deliver you from all these problems, troubles, whatever. Okay, it's because you're adultering in your hearts with the things that you love over God. That's why you're not able to overcome. It does. It will never work. Never work. Never be free. Never be free from sin if you live that way. And times are coming. God is coming soon. And if you're not prepared, you'll be judged according to your deeds and, and be cast out. Okay? So get ready, guys. Get ready. We, we don't know how long, you know? Um, I don't know. This is something that I believe. Okay? God's going to judge, and Jesus Christ is going to judge a millennium, a thousand years. Okay? And God's number seven. Okay, he gave, I believe God gave six, because man's number is 666, right? Man's number that the devil took is six. And I believe God gave us six days as, as you read the tabernacles, piece of tabernacles, which I'll kind of explain later. But I'll just go briefly. Okay, it's thousand years each, you know. Since Jesus' time, about two days, two thousand years are given unto the Gentiles. Okay, now that time is almost near ending. And I believe that's when Jesus comes back to rule and to judge for a thousand years. So the whole history of earth, whatever, with Jesus would be 7,000 years. Already, about 6,000 is gone. Okay, that's, you can put Jesus Christ as a meter. Okay, he came after about 4,000 years. Okay, now we spent about 2,000. 2,030 would be exactly about 2,000 years. Or 33, if Jesus left at 33, then 33. That means we got maybe like, I don't know, 15, 20 years, if anything. If anything, I'm not telling you the exact time and date. Okay, I'm just saying, hey, we don't know when Jesus can return, you know, right? He might return very quickly. Of course, the Antichrist needs to show up. Of course, there needs to be a temple built, but it could be built anytime. Who knows, if Trump becomes president, hey, he might bulldoze all over, hey, I'm a builder, I'm going to rebuild. He might rebuild, okay? Israel, and, and he doesn't like Muslims, he doesn't like Islam, he might get rid of them. Say, hey, get out of the land, let the Jewish people do with their land, whatever. I don't know, okay, I'm just making, okay, guesses. So don't totally trust that, but anyhow, point is, you know, who are we to judge one another? Don't judge and don't try to just expose people. Let's go Matthew 7, chapter 1 to 5. Judge not that you, you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. Okay, you'll be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck 
that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye, you hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eyes. So as long as that person, okay, is not wrong in those main doctrines, other things, they can get wrong, okay? It's not something that causes you to lose your salvation. Okay, as long as these doctrines that they believe doesn't cause them to lose salvation, it's okay. Because who can understand God totally? Who understands the Bible totally? Nobody. Except God. Okay? Who understands the heavens and the earth? God is greater than the heavens and the earth. Who understands? Even Paul, with much more knowledge than us, much more revelation than us, he said, Oh, that I know Christ, that I know Him is my desire. Okay? We're like ants trying to figure out God who's bigger than this universe. Okay? You're trying to figure out God. And some say, oh, God is like, I don't know, this. Some say, God is like this. Oh, from the scriptures I read, this is my understanding. No, some scriptures I read, no, this is my understanding. Oh, we don't match. We're going to fight. No, actually, you guys just know part. Part, part, part. The Bible says. Okay, we don't have the fullness of the knowledge of God yet. But in that day, when we're face to face, then we'll know. When we're face to face with Jesus Christ, there's nothing that you don't need knowledge. So you'll know the knowledge will be on front of you, the truth will be on front of you. Everything will be revealed at that day. So don't fret yourself if your brother don't believe in uh, putting up makeup. Well, the Bible says if they don't believe in just to not hurt them, don't put makeup. If your brother is offending that you're eating shrimps, don't eat shrimp just so that you don't offend the brother. But don't be quarreling and bickering. Oh, you don't know. You don't know. Oh, fight, 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 fight. Okay? It doesn't matter. Okay? What is told to the Gentiles, as long as you don't eat blood, living, like blood that's just dripping from the meat, as long as you aren't eating that blood. Secondly, as, as long as you're not sexually moral, Thirdly, as long as you're not serving any idol worship or whatever, or eating food from the idol worshiping tables, as long as you're not doing those, don't do, don't condemn him and fight him over. It's not this, this, this person, you know, who obviously speaks in tongues, who believes in prophecy, he's saying that, oh, you spoke wrong because uh, you said, oh, oh, you know, tongues is more important than prophecy. Oh, but Bible says prophecy is more greater than tongues. So I, so I was trying to explain, hey, you know, for your personal life, in the context of, of, of your own life, tongues is more important because prophecy is for other people. So in your own private time, yeah, tongues is more important. You need to pray in tongues. That's what the gift was given first because God gives the most important things first. So that's why I said when people baptized, they, they, they mostly got baptized. The Holy Spirit, they all spoke in tongues. Okay, tongues. So that's why I said this is more important. God put the priority in receiving this first, foremost. And they're like, oh no, I received prophecy first, so you're wrong. Well, like, well whatever, you want to believe that doesn't matter. Whether you, whatever, if, I, if I'm wrong or right or whatever, doesn't matter in a sense of your own salvation. If you don't want to believe, don't believe it then. I'm not asking you to trust me 100%. Okay, if you don't agree, then don't agree. I said in the context of gathering body of Christ, don't speak in tongues because what's the point of speaking tongues, teacher, when they don't understand you? Okay? So he said, then prophecy is greater at this gathering because prophecy actually can benefit everybody, but tongues can only benefit yourself. It only builds yourself up. It only gives thanks to God in the spirit of you. So who can understand you? If there's no interpreter, or if there's, uh, you know, no prophets, how can they benefit the body? That's why I'm saying, 
You know, so in that context, the one who speaks in prophecy is greater in rank. Because prophecy is a higher gift. But it doesn't mean it's more important to you. Prayer is the most important gift that God gave us. Praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ first in words and in spirit. Okay? In tongues. So, I was just saying that context is more important. But you don't have to, you know, bicker and fight about this little tiny thing that doesn't matter. Okay? Oh, the chicken came out first. No, the egg is first. Who cares? Who cares? Okay? Whether chicken was first, egg was... Who cares? Okay? People fight over the littlest things and break apart their long relationships. The other common things that they have, they break it apart. So is Christians. Oh, they both believe in Jesus. They both believe in whatever the Spirit gives. And just a little tiny thing, they disagree and it breaks apart their relationship. Think about it. It's hurting Jesus when you're exposing Christians for, for little tiny things. It, it breaks apart the body of Christ and it, God is in pain in crying after your, your disunity. He's, he's in pain. You're causing pain to the body. It's the body of Jesus Christ. If you take apart the arm and pull it off, you're causing damnation to yourself. You're causing great pain to the Lord. If you break a church apart, oh, and you steal people for your own ministry out of the body of Christ, you're causing curse to yourself. Man. I'm sorry. You need to repent. If you ever went into somebody's group, you broke them apart, took out members to yourself, you're cursed, man. You're cursed. And you need to repent for it. And you have blood on your hands. You ripped the body of Jesus Christ. Blood of His blood is all over you. Splatted all over, all over you. Okay? You need to repent. You ripped up His body. And don't cause curse to yourselves, man. If you're gonna leave the church, leave the church by yourself. Okay? Don't take out other members with you and get them against a pastor or a preacher or whatever just because you don't like them. Don't do that, man. You know, leave yourself. Okay? Simple. Keep it simple. Don't, don't do evil before God's eyes. Now, about, you know, prosperity preaching. A lot of people, yeah, they just want to hear the ear-tickling message. Feel good. Money hungry, finance Christians, okay? Now, this is obviously when you look at the fruit of the Christians, the preachers, they're ex extravagantly large living, like how you say, huge house, expensive cars, whatever. Think about it. Where is their conscience of love? towards other suffering people. Huh? How can they sleep so well in such a nice place without having any guilt when their neighbors are suffering badly out in the cold, shivering, when their brothers and sisters don't even have shoes to wear and they're wearing the most expensive shoes, wearing the most expensive bags and clothing, and riding the most expensive cars and jets and whatever, where is that person's conscience about other people? What is the law of God? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Okay? Now, if you're supposed to love other people as much as you love yourself, if you have two coats, you're supposed to give it away. If you have a lot of money, give unto the poor. Give. Okay? You don't believe in tithing and offering? Well, then believe the new law, which is greater than 10%. Believe in that. Okay? Because everybody sold their possessions and gave it on to the church and laid it down the apostles' feet in the first church. Follow that example. And give. For it will be given on to you. Good measure. Pressed down to the other, shaken together. And you'll be having 
great rewards in heaven. Okay? It says, store not your treasures on earth. Well, why are you storing your treasures on earth? Okay? Give. And it'll be given unto you. The law shows you the minimum. Don't murder is a minimum. The grace says, you even hate somebody in your heart, that's already murder. You need to forgive everybody and don't hold hate. Because if you don't forgive, my Father in heaven will not forgive you either. What does the Bible say? Huh? What does old, old law say? Don't commit adultery. The new one says, if you even looked at a woman with lust, you already commit adultery. You're already an adulterer. Okay? The law says, tithe. Bring 10% of all your belongings into my storehouse. The grace says, give. With a cheerful heart. Give everything. Basically, give everything. They gave everything. They sold their houses, homes, and gave it everything. Which one do you want to follow? Huh? The minimum? The 10%? Or the real law? The law of the Spirit. Giving. Hmm? I don't understand you. You, you, you know, like, you cannot just hold the will to you and expect. Bible condemns it. Read James. Okay? Read the New Testament throughout. Look what Jesus says about riches. Who unto you who are rich now? Okay, weep and hey, wail. Don't, don't you know? Read. Read about wealth. Type Bible about rich. You find. Now, so, uh, exposing Christian stuff, okay? If you don't want to be condemned, don't do it. Okay? As long as they're not off on the main teaching of God, don't go and condemn them. Okay? They, they want to believe otherwise, oh, whatever. Okay? You, you tell them, but they don't want to listen. Leave them alone. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to expose you. That's already evil. That's, you're already used by the devil. This devil causes wants to cause more divisions in the body of Christ. He wants you to just divide, 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 and have the body of God left with nothing. And you're being used if you're after exposure, exposing, exposing, exposing Christian, this Christian, that Christian, this Christian, that pastor, that whatever. If you're after these things, you're, you don't even know God's love. Okay? So let's, with that mind, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I just ask that you please forgive us of our sins of any condemnation that we have given unto others, any judging that we have done, Father, forgive us. Father, help us not to just go around and, and kill each other by words and, and arguments and strife. Father, God, help us not to do that. Help us not to be carnal, but help us be more spiritual to please you, looking to do what pleases you, Father, God. And help us not to ex go and expose them unless they're really off in the doctrine of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and we give you all the praise and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.